Hey, it's Morris. I'm Shannon Morris. Welcome to Morse Code. I do tech reviews and tutorials. So if you are looking for in-depth tech and gadget content, you've come to the right place. All sorts of folks, myself included, have been testing the new Galaxy S21 and the S21 Ultra cameras and have said some pretty positive remarks about it. I have seen the tweets. A lot of my fellow YouTube reviewers have been posting photos, myself included, and we've all been pretty happy with what we've seen. So Samsung Galaxy phones have for a long time been pretty good when it comes to the cameras, but the Pixel and the iPhones have notably done much better for things like low light and for portrait performance. So I was curious if the S21 line improved enough to really be comparable to their biggest Android competition when it comes to a camera, the Pixel, or if they still had a way to go. Now I'm sure that some people in the comments will argue that the Pixel does not have a good camera, but I will argue that the software within Pixel pixels really makes those stand out. Now, this is not going to be a side-by-side -side comparison between iPhones or pixels with the S21s. This is just an in-depth explanation and analysis of the cameras on these two new phones. Comparison videos will come later on in the month. Also, I know a lot of camera opinions can vary from person to person, so please, please be respectful of each other's views in the comments. Some people like vibrant photos, for example. Some people don't, obviously. I like vibrancy. So first we have the specs. The lenses are pretty much the exact same on the Galaxy S20 as the new S21. The S21 Ultra has a different telephoto lens and an additional one. Now here are the specs side by side for the two that I have in hand. First you have the S21. This one has a main sensor, which is 12 megapixels with optical image stabilization. That one will give you your regular one times zoom or your regular photography zoom. It's an f1.8 aperture, 1.8 micron pixel size, and that is a larger pixel size designed for more light. Then you have the ultra wide, which is 12 megapixels as well. This one is a 120 degree field of view with a 0.5 times zoom. And you can see that that zoom for the ultra wide is a little bit different from the S21 Ultra. This one has a 1.4 micron pixel size and an f2.2 aperture. The telephoto lens is a 64 megapixel with three times hybrid optic zoom and a 30 times digital zoom. It has a 0.8 micron pixel size, f2.0 aperture, and it also includes optical image stabilization. So that zoom capability, that 30 times zoom, that happens because of sensor cropping, but there is no optical magnification happening. Now switching it over to the front, you have your 10 megapixel selfie camera. It's an f2.2 aperture at a 1.22 micron pixel size. Now moving on to the S21 ultra sensors. This is a quad rear camera setup. So you have four different cameras on the back. First is your main camera at 108 megapixels. That's huge. 0.8 micron pixel size. It has an aperture of 1.8 and it does include OIS as well as laser autofocus. The ultra wide is 120 degrees. This one is a 12 megapixel at 1.4 micron pixel size. It has an aperture of f2.2 and a 0.6 times zoom fixed focus. So that one is a little bit different from the 0.5 on the S21. The telephoto has a 10 times zoom, 10 megapixel camera, and this one has a 1.22 micron pixel size, f4.9 aperture, and it also includes OIS as well. This one is in a folded or a periscope lens technology, so you won't see it popping out from your smartphone. Then you have your second telephoto lens right next to it. This one is a three times zoom, 10 megapixel size, and it's a 1.22 micron pixel size with an aperture of f2.4, and it also includes optical image stabilization. Flipping it over to the front, we have the selfie camera at 40 megapixels, definitely an upgrade, 0.7 micron pixel size, and an f2.2 aperture. So I did want to mention a couple of notes about the 108 megapixel main camera on the Ultra. Samsung is calling this tech for this one Nona binning. You take a bunch of pixels, nine to be accurate, and it's treated as one big super pixel. So when you take 108 and divide it by nine, you get a 12 megapixel photo. So that's what's going to come out. If you want to shoot this with high quality detail, you have 
have to choose 108 megapixels within the ratio settings in order to shoot at that size for your photography. Now, video options and the camera app modes are pretty much the same on each of these phones, which is kind of why I wanted to include them together. You can record at several different resolutions and frame rates. There's full HD at 30 and 60, UHD at 30 and 60, and 8K at 24. I don't necessarily recommend 8K at 24 for everybody since there is no expandable storage in these phones, so you're stuck with what you get, and 8K does take up a lot of space. So I would probably stick with UHD or Full HD, and normally I go with 30 over 60. Super Steady also is only available for Full HD at 30 and 60. So now I have some comparison shots to show you because I did take these out and I had such a good time reviewing these. I did some comparison shots between the two phones. Videos appeared pretty color accurate, though the sky is slightly saturated, so it's a little bit more blue than what it looked like in person. It did very well in shadows. It was really good at balancing those colors between the lighter areas and the shadows, and it still brought out details in signage and in the buildings around me, so no issues there. This is a 8K 24 video on both the Ultra and the 21. Simple. Wow, so cool. Hi! <laughs> This is a test with Super Steady on. Welcome to downtown Parker. So great. The front facing video is also pretty much the same between the two. It did a much better job at keeping the sky from being blown out, which I have experienced with some selfie cameras. And my mask was slightly oversaturated. It is not that pink in person, but it still looked really good. The audio I felt like was a bit hollow, so I would recommend an external mic if using this for vlogging. And here is a UHD 60 FPS video of the front facing camera on both of these at the same time. Let's see how it looks. Ooh. Hey baby, I'm recording a video in full HD on both of these phones at the same time to see how the audio and the video looks. Woohoo! There's also some in-app features. Under the camera settings, most of the options are pretty much the same as previous generations. You can disable ultra-wide distortion correction under the advanced options if you want. I prefer to leave it on because I end up with really, really nice pictures of like architecture with the ultra-wide. Selfie color tone can be set to natural or bright depending on your preferences as well. They do try to get you to enable location tags in your photos, but for metadata privacy, I I do recommend leaving that off. However, most social media will remove that metadata as soon as you upload the pictures to that social media platform. But if you're sending them to other people just over like messages or over a online storage like a cloud service, then that metadata data might still be there. So I highly recommend just disabling it from the get-go so you don't have to worry about it. You can also disable face smoothing completely or add the face smoothing techniques that you prefer under the filters option. There's a pro mode for both video and photo, and that allows all sorts of edits, including, and this is pretty cool, changing the microphone's direction. As an example from omnidirectional to the front, the rear, or USB. So you can totally put in an external mic, and I kind of love that. And if you do choose to record 8K videos, you can take photos straight from the playback and they will be high resolution pictures. So that's cool. Then we have single take. Now single take has gotten some updates. This is still going to take a five to 15 second shot and it will capture various final photos and videos for you, like filtered videos, photos, portraits, a collage maybe, a wide and crop pics, all sorts of things. So there are a couple of new categories that are included. One is called highlight videos and the other is called speed effect clips. 
Now, I still think that single take video captures are pretty cheesy, but I do like the filtered photos that the AI comes up with. I really do need to know like why in all of my tests it chose to save the regular video upside down. Don't know why that happens. Like who who's going to need an upside down video? Why is it upside down? Well, whatever it's worth, you can disable the cheesy videos within the single take settings, luckily, so they won't take up all of your storage. Now, lastly is this very cool, at least I think it's cool, director's view. And this lets you record from both rear and front lenses at the same time as a picture in picture or side by side, or you can just record on the rear cameras and it will let you switch between the lenses with a little preview pane down at the bottom. Now there is no zoom in director's view, but it is still incredibly useful. I think if you are a vlogger, don't mind me being completely makeup free in some of my example photos and videos of the camera app because, um, I don't wear makeup if I'm not recording. I also did a couple of test director's view videos on both the S21 and the Ultra, so you can kind of see what those look and sound like in the final recording. Okay, so this is the director's view on the S21, showing all the different lenses of the back camera while it's still recording the front one as well. That is so cool. <laughs> Check that out. It is full HD, decently clear, fairly clear picture, but quite shaky, <laughs> like really shaky. This would probably be best if it was used on a gimbal. Low light photography was consistently better on the S21 Ultra with bright signage, much, much easier to read, and the photo in general just being a lot more crisp and there being a lot less noise. I did get some pretty serious glare around the street lights and the headlights though on both of these, especially when I was taking pictures just from the pedestrian sidewalks. So keep that in mind whenever you're taking pictures in low light. It might just work a lot better if you're taking pictures where there aren't lights just glaring straight at your lens. The zoom mode is far superior on the S21 Ultra than on the S21. On the S21, you max out at 30 times zoom. On the Ultra, you max out at 100 times zoom. This is very similar to what we saw last year. Last year, though, this looked like a potato. This year, it looks a lot better at max zoom, partially thanks to the zoom lock feature. More on that in a bit. So starting at ultra wide, they're about the same. There's a little variation because they are at different ultra wide settings. So there's 0.5 and 0.6. Same with one times zoom. They look about the same using the main camera, but two times and up, immediately include noticeable differences. The tree, if you look at the tree, it's much clearer on the Ultra. Same with that little diner signage and the lights along the street. Move on up to four times zoom and then 10 times. And there's obvious differences between the two. 30 times is still incredibly impressive on the Ultra while the regular S21 kind of looks like a drunk lens. There's also a really big difference in exposures with these mountain pictures, but as I zoom closer and closer to the mountain range, the S21 Ultra still looks very impressive, while the regular S21 still looks like a potato. Yep, looks like a potato. I will mention though, 100 times zoom is not that great on the mountains. Unlike the diner signage, where there's something clearly there for the AI to compute and to sharpen the edges of, there's a lack of detail in the mountains and those similar colors end up kind of looking like an abstract oil painting on the Ultra instead of an actual picture of mountains. Now, both of the phones have this new zoom lock when you go over 20 times zoom. It uses AI to stabilize the photo to reduce your camera shake because that's going to happen much more obviously whenever you're zooming in and you're holding your phone. This plus Samsung's new advanced super image processing helps keep those photos clear because let's face it, they are smartphone digital zoom photos. They are not optical zoom photos from a real camera. So they do lack a lot of clarity that you would get from a traditional zoom lens. The zoom lock is relatively easy to use, but you do need to still have a decently steady hand in order to line up the phone in the general area that you wanna take a picture of. So it does take a little bit of practice to really get an idea of how to use it. It will auto lock after 1.5 seconds, and then you can take your zoom picture. 
Ta-da! Can we talk about portraits, though? Portraits! Wow, such an upgrade from last generation. They have absolutely done wonders with portrait mode this time around. It does a much better job at keeping my hair from blending in with the background. That was such a big issue I had last year. Generally, I was satisfied with all of the portrait photos that I have been taking, but it is not perfect. It is much more natural. The bokeh does not look so fake. I really appreciate that it's more of a gradual change in the blur effect behind you instead of just being something that's super sharp. However, low light portraits still give you kind of that cutout effect, but at least my hair is not blending in with the background or the chair behind me when I took these pictures in my low light office. Regular ultra wide photos are comparable between the two. Again, the ultra does 0.6 while the regular S21 does 0.5 zoom on the ultra wide. So there is a slight difference with how much you see in your picture. Using the main lens with no portrait mode gave me some really nice shots with clear details, no noise, like in these examples of these crane statues, just gorgeous pictures. I was surprised that the sky didn't get blown out in any of these photos. I was actually very impressed given that there was clouds and the sun was setting, so there was a lot of bright light going on behind them. The Ultra did tend to be a little bit sharper in details than the S21. So overall, they are very, very close in quality to each other. The S21 Ultra offers consistently slightly better images than the S21, especially when it comes to zoom and in like really minute details in the photos, but they are very, very close in all the other ways when it comes to photography and videography. But I would love to know what you think. Comment below, let me know what you think of these example photos. Do you feel the same as I do as far as the upgrades that we are seeing this year. If you are new here, subscribe to become a part of my amazing community and check out my Patreon and buy me a coffee links down below to see how you can support the channel and join all of the fine folks who have become patrons. Thanks again to my s'mores for subscribing and for watching. I'm Shannon Morse and I will see you soon. Bye y'all!